as a child growing up in Maharashtra, I remember uh, without realizing what was actually happening that uh, in the early 60s, mid 60s, my father would come home with people, uh, random people in some ways, uh, and have, would have told my mother to prepare extra food. Uh, and those were the days when there was severe shortage of food in the country. Uh, the government had actually asked that you not have one meal a week because we it's such a severe shortage of food. And, and these people who came were maybe the meal that my mother prepared during the day was the only meal that they had that day. So when you think about food security, uh, today we have abundance of food in a way, but despite that, we still have 300 million plus people who don't have enough food. Um, if we think about the increasing population and the projections that we have in front of us, that we will, we will be looking at maybe possibly 9 billion people, depending on what projections you look at. Um, we need to really think about our ability to produce enough food which is available at a reasonable price for all people. If we, um, if we say that we have a lot of food today and that that will be enough, then it is wrong because if we think about the pressures on our land, we think about the resources that we are consuming for production, we probably don't have enough. We don't have enough land, we don't have enough water. We have uh, challenges of environmental degradations and these, all of these factors put together as we look at increasing, further increasing the productivity and the food grain in addition to the diversified food basket that we talk about in terms of vegetables and fruits and uh, legumes which are essential, then we really need to work, we really need to look at how uh, we work together in terms of research, in terms of technology, in terms of markets and how we can produce this food, the additional amount of food that is required in a sustainable manner. When we talk about sustainability and we talk about green revolution, uh, you know, the high yielding varieties of green revolution brought tremendous benefits. We went from the situation that I was describing earlier about people not having uh, or government asking people not to have consumed one meal because we didn't have enough grain uh, and the Green Revolution really tackled that, uh, brought about a dramatic change in what food was available, food grains were available in the country. This happened as a result of uh, introduction of high yielding varieties, uh, clubbed together with uh, irrigation in some situations and also fertilizer which was available. So you have combination of these factors at a minimum which allowed a production to increase dramatically. As uh, science and technologies have advanced, uh, in our view, we are now able to do similar dramatic advances in, uh, in productivity without having a big footprint on the environment. So we can have crops which tolerate, um, uh, which can grow better in less water, crops which use less fertilizer, and um, have higher productivity as a result we need less, less land mass. So are we ready to be able to feed the uh, 8 to 9 billion people? Definitely. But we need to take um, concrete steps to make sure that uh, science advances are utilized fully for agriculture to uh, deliver the results that we want.